Hello, people. Good morning, Patrice Ristiwanano here again. Today's topic is about word formation. I'm going to explain how words are formed, how new words are formed with uh, morphemes and other linguistic devices. Okay, let's dive into my PowerPoint slides. Okay, before starting my presentation, I'd like to remind you that we can be very creative when it comes to word formation. In our Indonesian language, we have been familiar with these new words, yang lebay, for example, itu sungguh lebay. Tamfan, wah dia sudah tamfan sekarang. Yeah. Instagramable, spot ini sangat Instagramable. And then there are many words like alay, check it out, which I think comes from check it out, yeah, but pronounced in Indonesian, becomes check it out, papak, papak, <laughs> copas. Yeah. Okay, let's go to my presentation. Okay, people, ladies and gentlemen, so this is our topic today, word formation processes. I'm going to uh, talk from these slides, but not all. Yeah. Um, okay, so from this slide, um, one important thing is that neologism, it is the construction of a new word or a new usage or expression. So actually, we are studying neologism. Okay. Um, now here is the the second slide. Uh, the essence of this lesson: types of word formation. So you can we can form words through nine steps. One is coinage, borrowing, compounding, blending, clipping, back formation, conversion acronyms and derivation okay so there are nine steps or there are nine types of uh, word formation okay um, coinage let's start with coinage coinage is actually invention of totally new words words that have not existed before it's totally new uh, it can be an extension of a name of a product from a specific reference to a more general one so for example kleenex xerox and kodak are they are all uh, brands, yeah, but then they become uh, a distinct word to con to convey the meaning of that good or that object. Yeah, Kodak, for example, stands for camera. Yeah. And eponyms, uh, the words are based on the name of a person or a place. The most popular example will be our jeans, the jeans that we are wearing. Jeans is actually the name of a person, and when it becomes um, a new word, it is called eponym. Okay. Borrowing. Now, uh, not only money can be borrowed, but also language or words can be borrowed from one country to another. But the difference is that when you when your language borrows from another language, we do not bother to return to it. <laughs> it's different from money. Okay. So borrowing uh, means taking off our words from another language. English borrowed a lot of Latin and French words. And for example, you have this words yeah, borrowed from Dutch, from Italian. Even the word mug yeah, is borrowed from Japanese, from amo, amo, ngamo, yeah, mug, A-M-O-K. That's an English word, but it's actually borrowed from Japanese. Yeah. Okay, borrowing and then compounding simply means two or more words joined together to form a new word. So for example, you have the word home, you com combine it with the word work, becomes homework. Pick and pocket becomes pick pocket. Low and paid becomes low paid. So simply two words combined together to form a new meaning, to form a new word, combine, compounding. Yeah. The meaning of a compound is not always the sum of the meanings of its parts. Okay, this can be funny. Coconut oil is oil made from coconuts. Olive oil is oil made from olives. But when you have baby oil, it doesn't mean oil made from babies. <laughs> it would be brutal. <laughs> it would be horrible to make uh, oil from babies. Yeah? So it's actually oil for babies, yeah? not oil made from babies. Okay. Uh, blending, similar to compounds, but in blending, only parts of the words are combined. So uh, there are two words and you take only parts of each word 
and then you combine them. Yeah. So for example, motor and hotel, from the word motor, you uh, take only mo, and from the word hotel, you take only tel, it becomes, and then you combine them. Uh, it, you, you combine the two pieces together, you will have motel. Breakfast and lunch becomes brunch. So you take only the the per here, the PR, and then you take only the UNCH here, and you combine them together, you have branch. Smoke plus fog becomes smoke. Teleprinter plus, plus exchange becomes telex. Okay, yeah. that's blending, clipping. Well, actually, this should precede the blending. Shortening a word by deleting one or more syllables. syllables. Clipping, cutting. Yeah. So, for example, facsimile, you cut it into facts, you shorten it. Hamburger, you clip it into only burger, no, um, hamburger. Gasoline, shorten or clip into gas. Advertisement, clip into ad. Professor, clip into prof, maybe. Doctor, clip into doc, D O C. Okay, so that's clipping. Back formation, uh, creative reduction to the incorrect morphological analysis. So this will be easier if you see the examples. Uh, previously or formerly we have the word editor. Editor has been around for uh, for a while. And then from the word editor, people become creative. They creatively uh, create the word edit. Now the word edit is a new word which is derived from the word editor. Yeah. That's called back formation. Television, formerly the word the original word was television and then people uh, become creative they creatively create the word televised which is derived from the word television yeah. babysitter uh, uh, forms babysit yeah. from babysitter we can creatively uh, create a word a new word which is babysit this is called back formation okay so this always involves reduction, changing the form of the word. Yeah, you can see that each of the word here is changed. The form is changed. Conversion, assigning an already existing word to a new syntactic category. This is also proliferate. This is also abundant in our language, in our daily use of language. For example, butter, which is a noun, it can be turned into a verb, into a different syntactic category, that is, Verb to butter the bread. Now the word butter here is the verb. Yeah. Permit originally is a verb, can be turned into a noun, an entry permit. Empty, which is adjective, can be turned into a verb to empty the letter bin. Must, also a verb, model auxiliary, uh, can be turned into a noun. Doing the homework is a must. Now must here is a noun, right? Microwave uh, can be a noun can be turned into a verb as well. Yeah, you determine what is the result of microwave being turned into a verb. Okay. okay, so that's conversion. Yeah. Acronyms are words derived from the initials of several words. For example, so you have National Aeronautics and Space Agency becomes NASA. This becomes UNICEF, this becomes UNESCO, this becomes C D. Yeah, that's acronym. You take only the initial uh, the initial letter of the words yeah. and you have radar fyi etc etc that's acronyms yeah um yeah the next one is derivation this is the most common word formation process uh, we work with affixes in Wuhan affixes for example happy we put the affix un becomes un unhappy uh, if we put the affix ness, becomes happiness. Yeah, so this is from the word happy, you put the affixes to create new words. Here the affixes is in, un and ness. Arrange becomes rearrange. Yeah, also, we have prefixes and suffixes. Uh, this is awalan, this is ahiran, infixes, this is sisipan in our language. This is put inside the word. So, for example, tell them I've gone to 
single bloody board. <laughs> the word bloody here is inserted in inside the, the word Singapore. Maybe because uh, he hasn't got enough, he hasn't got a good experience in Singapore, and so he calls that single bloody board. <laughs> instead of Singapore, it is single bloody board. The bloody here is inserted into Singapore, and it is a case of uh, derivation. Um, of course, you have multiple processes. The creation of a particular word involves more than one process. For example, problems with the project have snowball. Snowball is a compound, and snowball itself, then in turn, it becomes verb, so it's conversion. It undergoes the process of conversion. Okay. Uh, yeah, you can identify the process involved in the creation of the following forms. I just got a new car phone. James wants to be a footballer. The negotiators blueprinted a new piece proposal. So for each of the underlined word here, you can determine the process of the word formation. Is it blending and then conversion or, or what you determine? Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's it. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Good luck, stay safe and stay healthy. Goodbye.